Hi guys, welcome back to my channel, or if you're new, welcome. My name is Monica, and today I do look a bit different. <laughs> I don't have any makeup on, I actually just got out of the shower and just did my skincare, and I found a few minutes for me to film. I've been really busy, December is like my busiest month, so I found a few minutes to film, and I thought, you know what, let me just throw on this new wig that I got during a Black Friday sale. Throw a hat on, because I literally haven't even like cut the lace yet, but I just wanted to test it out and see how the color looks, and I didn't want to do makeup with it first, because I really don't know how makeup's gonna look with this color but honestly I think it's so cute it's like a pale kind of lilac pink and I think it's gonna look cute so once I actually like fix up the lace and everything it'll look like a normal wig I promise but since I only have one two three four five six palettes from Natasha Denona I thought I would take this time to just go ahead and rank them for you guys you guys have been loving this I'm I guess I'm calling it a series where I rank different brands in my uh makeup collection specifically just for eyeshadow palettes and I think I'm, once I hit like three or four videos I'll create a playlist so if I already have a playlist I'll throw it up if not keep an eye out because the playlist will be coming like the rest of the videos I have pre-ranked these palettes just to make it a bit easier for me to go through all of them so let's just jump in coming in right down at the bottom <laughs> is my most expensive palette in my entire collection and that is the green brown palette this thing is huge it's the 28 shades but it is gorgeous I can't even like fit the whole thing in the frame <laughs> so this is a gorgeous palette did I need this no I began lusting after this after I saw a YouTuber I used to watch. I don't watch her really much anymore. She used this for her wedding day and she was the one who like really hyped up the Natasha Nona palettes and the formulas and I saw this palette and I was like I love greens. I could work with browns. Yes. But I got it and I I rarely reach for this and touch it especially for the price point. Like I should be using this daily for the price point. This is like $250. But I don't and just yeah this is like my biggest makeup regret I should not have bought this I kind of wish I had returned it but you know what I'm gonna hold on to it learn from it try to reach for it more but it is my least favorite palette from Natasha Dona and my most expensive in my collection so next I have another palette that I kind of regret purchasing just because I got it because of the hype but I don't reach for this color story like at all at all and this is the Leela palette. So this is, of course, like the purple-pink palette. Um, I did, I believe, rearrange the shades in here, so it might not look like your Leela palette if you have one. There are a few gorgeous shades in here, like this gold right over here, these kind of lighter shades over here, but I don't reach for this just because for someone who doesn't like pink and purple, I've got a lot of palettes and a lot of shades that are pink and purple, but... Oh, this is the girl wearing the pink hair right now, right? Right. But I... Uh, I part of me almost sold this. Part of me, like wanted to give it away but like it's just the price point is just so high and oh, I don't know I don't know like I'm gonna try and use this I'm gonna try and do a palette resurrection with this and do a couple of looks just to see how I'm feeling give this a few more months maybe on the chopping block but yeah I don't regret it as much as that big green brown palette but it's not one of my favorites all right, next I have a mini palette that is only this far down on the list because I haven't really used it as much as the other palettes. So this is the mini gold palette. So this is like $25 and it really is mini if you compare it to my hand. It's about the size of like a finger. And I know that surprises a lot of people because they're kind of expecting her five pan palette. So I'm gonna spoil the next one. The next one is a five pan palette. This is the size of a five pan palette, but this is like $45. This is $25. This is the size difference. So you're not getting this. You are, however, just getting a nice mini arrange, arrangement of the shades from the bigger palette it is based on. This is based on the gold palette. And that gold palette tempted me so bad. But like I looked at the other palettes that I own. And I'm like, Monica, you're not reaching for those palettes. Why would you buy another big Natasha Denona palette, you know? So I got the mini and I'm so glad I got the mini. This is basically all I wanted out of that palette and maybe like the browns. I didn't need the browns in here. I just wanted the greens and this nice duochrome kind of shade and I got that and it was so much cheaper. I did a spotlight on petite palettes with this palette. So if you missed that, I'll throw it up in the cards if you want to see that. But you know, I, I like it. I wish I had gotten more or gone for more mini palettes as opposed to like the bigger palettes, but this was a good purchase. I did like this. And like I said, it's only this far down on the list because I did recently get this. I got it in October, so it's the newest 
one of the newest palettes in my collection but I still really like it and I'm glad I got this and I do think it's a bit more affordable. Like I spoiled, the next palette is a five pan palette and this is palette number two. So it's a nice kind of just warm cranberry neutral palette. I also did a spotlight on Petite palettes with this palette. I'll throw that up in the cards if you want to see it. You really only get one or two looks out of this but it is a gorgeous, quick, good look honestly. Do I think it's the worth the $45? Eh. I think if you want to try Natasha Denona and you want a little bit more than a mini palette but you don't want one of the big palettes, get one of these. Basically gives you everything that you need. It's cheap. I mean it is more a higher end price but it's cheaper than her bigger palettes. So yeah, I mean I like it. It's right. It's like right smack dab in the middle and I enjoy it. I don't reach for it as often as I would like to but it is a good solid palette. All right, next we have the palette that comes in number two, which has been a quick favorite of mine ever since I purchased it back in October, and this is the Metropolis palette. This has a lot of shades in here, but you do get a little bit less per pan. Let me compare this to the uh, Lila palette real quick. So as you can see, the pan sizes in the Metropolis are smaller than the Lila, but you do get more shades in here, and this is also a lot cheaper. All right, so now before you come at me, that was a lie. I was thinking of the bigger palettes when I said that. So it is, it's got the same amount of shades as the 28 palette, that big one that was my least favorite in this series. But it's like half the price of that big palette. So it's 129, which is like half the price of that huge 28 pan palette, but it's got 28 pans. The pan sizes are just smaller. That's what I meant, I'm stupid, bye. I really want to rearrange the shades in here. Um, I know a friend of mine on Instagram did rearrange all of this into a grungy rainbow and that just solidified how much I was drawn to this palette. The shades, the tones, I get like grungy subculture, like color pop good sport vibes out of here. This is unique in the sense that I don't think Natasha Denona really has anything else like this and I am a bit sad that it's like limited edition because I really think this is a great, great palette. Um, I don't want to rearrange the shades until after I do my video on it, which will be coming soon, hopefully, um, before it's no longer available. I really don't know how long it's going to be available for, but this is just such a good palette. And I can see myself reaching for this palette more than the rest of the palette. So, like, for me, this is unique. This was worth the price point. All right. And last but not least, I talk a lot of shit about this palette, but I have to say, when this palette came out and kind of broke the makeup internet... I really wanted it. I was lusting after it. This is my first Natasha Denona palette. And ultimately, did I find other palettes that work just as well for lower price? Yes, I did. But this is still what got me into Natasha Denona. This is what got me into really, really warm eyeshadows. And I still think, like, I'll never declutter it. And it's still, like, my favorite Natasha Denona palette. And that's the Sunset palette. I spent almost a year... <laughs> wanting this and waiting for it to come back in stock because you know when it first came out it sold out like immediately and it was actually sold out and back then it was limited edition and so everyone was freaking out like we're not gonna get the sunset palette no one's gonna get it so eventually they restocked it and I'm pretty sure it sold out immediately too I I remember this came out I think in the beginning of the year and I had to wait until November to actually get it and I got it during the uh, Rouge sale so I didn't pay full price for this. I got it on sale and I waited a whole year for it. So to me, this, this was worth it. I don't reach for it as often as like I want to, but I'm going to make a point of reaching for it more. I almost panned, or I almost decided to pan this for 2020. It didn't quite make the cut because I wanted something a little bit more different, a little bit warmer. So I'm panning something else, but I like, I kind of want to pan this for the next year because <laughs> it's just, ah, it's a gorgeous palette. The shades are beautiful, just, and it's the original. This is, honestly, I think this is what kicked off the warm sunset sunrise palette craze. And then after this came out, you know, everyone and their mother came out with different palettes, including, you know, the ColourPop Yes Please palette, which is ColourPop's first palette that came out after this one. I talk about that a little bit more in my ColourPop video. I'll throw that up in the cards if you want to check that out. But Despite all of that, this is still my favorite and will continue to be my favorite Natasha Denona palette. And honestly, I would say just don't buy one of these palettes just for the hype. Buy it because it's color story that you really, really are drawn to. If there is a sale and if you dedicate the time needed to actually use it. Because these are some really expensive and like 
terrible palettes to purchase and then just leave in your drawer. They, when you're buying something that's luxurious, you should, you should use the crap out of them. And so I'm trying to get a little bit better at that. So there we have it. Those are all of my Natasha Denona palettes ranked favorite to least favorite, least favorite to favorite. Let me know down below if you guys own any Natasha Denona palettes, which one is your favorite. And if you like this wig, <laughs> I'm going to be working on it. I know I got to like pluck it and get rid of the lace and everything, but I've learned the hard way that trying to dye my hair doesn't work out well. So instead I tried to just get some wigs and try new things out. So thank you guys so much for watching and I cannot wait to see you in my next video. Bye. He was a skater boy, she said, see you later boy, he wasn't good enough for her.